by talking about camera settings. So, how many of you have wondered what you should set your cameras, your camera settings to? Um, what do the what do the pros use, and why do they use it? So, what we're going to do is just take a little bit of time to go into training, take a look at our camera settings, kind of play around with them a little bit, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what the sort of average pro uses and kind of what are more of the common settings. And so there's a little bit of difference to that, right? Um, you can take two numbers, you can average them, but does that really mean that that's like sort of what most people use? And then there's the most common setting, which is like the mode, right? So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, essentially, there is a um, somebody who did some really good data analysis of the matches in the in the RLCS, so it's the Rocket League Championship Series, and this person on Reddit, and I'll pull this up, you won't be able to see it, but just something I can reference. Um, this is Japanese Goblin on Reddit, um, basically looked at the camera settings, took the replays, replay files um, from the RLCS, I believe just this past league play um, this for, so this season season three and all of the pros um, put it into a spreadsheet and then what I did was I just did a um, uh, average them out also had the median in the mode and we're gonna also look at the, the default camera settings so what we're gonna do is first explain what the camera settings do and then we're gonna talk about um, what the pros use and why they use it and then I'll just talk a little bit about how I set my camera. Um, again, I'm not a pro player. <laughs> I'm not even that good of a player. I'm an average player. Um, but I've played better since I've changed my camera settings. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. So first, let's take a look at, I'm going to just kind of get a little bit more lined up here. Get up on the ball just a little bit so you can kind of see uh, the differences. So first off, Let's go ahead and get into the options. So we have camera, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, these are my current settings. Hopefully I remember them. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, change these to the default so you can see the default. And then, whoa, look at that, right? So you can see <laughs> the default. I feel like I am like right up on the car. Um, makes it look nice, but then it's like it's it's hard to like drive around. Oh, and I should also note that I'm using I disabled VSync, so I'm gonna come up back up here and enable that. Let me see if there's anything else. I think it's the main thing, right? Right. So okay, so these are like the default settings. Let's go ahead and take another look at these. Okay. So, camera shake on. What is camera shake? Camera shake is basically if you hit the ball, score a goal, those types of things, your camera will shake. Cool effect, right? Feel like you're in like a Michael Bay movie, but it's not, it's distracting. And that's one of the first things that people say, turn off, turn off camera shake, right? We're gonna turn that off. Um, camera FOV, that's field of view. It defaults to 90. One of the reasons, so there's two reasons why a lot of games usually have kind of a lower FOV, right? Um, one of the reasons is because for performance. If the field of view is smaller, then the games don't have to process as much in that's displayed. And so it's easier. So for example, if you're playing like Skyrim, doesn't it feel kind of like enclosed, right? If you're playing Skyrim on PS4, um, it feels kind of claustrophobic sometimes. Whereas like on PC, um, you know, you could like widen the, the field of view. Um, Rocket League enables you to widen the field of view. So why wouldn't you just jack it all the way up? Well, one of the reasons why is because it will introduce like fisheye. So basically, you know, the middle part of it is still like looks normal. It's not distorted, but the further you go out, then the more distorted it's going to be. Um, look like kind of sort of the fisheye lens at the higher FOV. Um, and then 
there's two issues with that. One issue is that it can actually, for some people, hurt their eyes. Like it actually hurts my eyes a little bit. Um, and, and that's probably more of an issue if you're playing on a TV, especially like a large TV. If you're playing on a monitor, a smaller monitor, it's really not as big a deal. That's, that's what I've heard. I don't play on a PC. Um, not yet. So I play on a 55-inch TV, HDTV. So it's, at first it was difficult, but then I've gotten used to it. So it takes a little while to get used to when you increase the FOV. The second issue is for, uh, and you'll notice this right here, when the ball is on the side, see how there's a little bit of distortion, right? And then there's less distortion as you come closer in. But when you have a higher field of view, let's just jack that all the way up. You can see the ball's already starting to distort right here, pretty badly, right? I'm not even all the way yet. Over here, look at that, it's crazy. That's like an oval. So, um, so it kind of distorts your view, and it also makes it more difficult to judge, like sort of the distance. So if you're using ball cam, and you're going up for an aerial, and the ball's coming like this way, and you're coming this way, if the ball's like distorted, then it's harder to see. Um, so that's the reasoning why some pros use a like moderately high FOV, not the max 110, but they might use like 100. So for a long time, uh, Cronovi, who's one of the most popular players in the world, used a 100 for his FOV, and that was his reasoning. Was because it was, if, you know, it's it's like more dis more distorted and it's harder to play the balls that are like further out that way. It also affects your sort of sense of speed. Um, but lately, I think I'm not sure when he switched, but lately I believe he switched to 110. I'll have to look it up. Um, either 105 or 110 or 108, somewhere around there. Um, most pros use 110. Um, some pros will use less. Um, Cookser, who's like the most, probably the best player in the world, he actually uses like a 98 or 90 something. Um, but then he has, he uses different camera settings. He uses kind of different controls. He's just completely different. Um, so he's like a mechanical genius. <laughs> but he, he just plays a little bit differently and he's always changing his control. A lot of pros are always changing their um, their settings. So to kind of go back again, you can see this is 110, a lot of fish eye, right? So if we go back to the default, you can see not as much fish eye, right? But then you can't see as much of the field. I mean look here on the sides, you know, it's it's the camera has like come up like this. So most people recommend to go ahead and put it kind of at least to 100, and that's what I would recommend, at least get it up to like 100 so that you have a wider field of view, but yet you don't have like a lot of distortion. You have some at the very edges, but not as much here. So that's what I would recommend is at least get 100, but if you want to have it like the pros do, then you want to change it to 110. Now keep in mind, most pros play on PC. Most PC monitors, the way and they're they're smaller than TVs, it's easier to see something that's like distorted like that. It won't affect your your eyes as much. Um, so just keep that in mind. So what I would probably say to do is to max it out, play with it a little bit, and then step it down until you feel comfortable. So for a while I was using 105, 102, 100, kind of going back and forth, um, mostly between 100, 102, somewhere in that range. Eventually I went up to 105, got used to it, and then I went up to 110 um, lately, and it's actually been working out well. So that is the the um, median uh, field of view and the mode. So it's the average is 108.2. So again, from the RLCS League Play games from the first, I don't know, few weeks, how many ever weeks of League Play, the players were using um, on average 108.2. Obviously, you can't do 108.2. That's how averages work. A lot of times, there there are numbers that are going to be um, kind of between other numbers. So the median, which is again, is like that middle value, is actually 110, and that is also the mode, which is the most common. In this case, there's there were 50 players, so I would say that's enough to say that that uh, if you have something that's common among 50 players, that's that's a decent amount. So and again, it's the same as the median. So if you want to have the field of view of a pro, then you want to use 110. 
Uh, camera distance um, is by default 240. Again, camera distance, as you can imagine, is sort of the distance between, and you can kind of see my car down below. See how close or how far away it goes. You can't really see all of it because of the screen is in the way, option screen, but you can see it right here. So typically, on average, it's 279.2 that the pros use. The median, again, the middle value of those 50 values, which is actually going to be the average between the two middle values since it's a, it's an even, even number uh, for that sample. Uh, so it's 275. You um, can't do 275, probably because it's between 270 and 280. Um, but interestingly enough, the mode, which is the most common, is 260. Um, and that's actually what I've been using. And the reason why I've been using 260 is I like it a little bit closer because I'm still trying to get more um, accurate and precise with my ball hits. So with the camera distance, the closer the camera distance um, and the lower FOV, uh, the um, the bigger the ball will be when you hit it, right? Because it's going to be kind of closer in, so you be a little bit more accurate. But the problem, of course, is you can't see as much around you. So a lot of pros will use like 270, 280, um, but the com most common, believe it or not, is actually 260. Camera height, um, basically it's the, you can see, it, it kind of just elevates the camera. It's not the angle, just elevates the camera. The default is 100. Um, the pros use 110. There are some that use higher, but essentially it's 110. That's what I use as well. Um, camera angle. Now, this is something that most people don't realize how important this is. This is negative 5, and some people will actually increase it. And what this does is it, it, it when you increase the angle, um, it's actually a negative, but you increase the angle, and then you can see how it goes up like this. Now, this is pretty useful for people who really focus on the ground game and dribbling and want to be able to see above the ball when they're like playing one-on-one, -on -one, um, 1v1s or, or duels. Um, but the problem is that it really messes with your aerials. Now some people can do this. I think Sad Jr. has some crazy high angle like this. So, um, but I would not recommend it because it makes aerials much tougher unless you're used to it. Again, the default is 5 and then the average is 4. The median in the mode though is 3. So, and it may not seem like much of a difference, but the lower you go, the more straight the camera is. And why that's important is when you're trying to hit like an aerial, when you have ball cam on, and you're going up and the ball's up here, and your car is here, if, if your car is like, you're, you can either be kind of looking at it more like this, or you can be looking at it more like this. And it's just, it's harder... If, if you're going like this, but if you're kind of going like this, then it's much easier. So um, somebody like Cookser has like a negative one, but again, he has he has crazy um, crazy settings. So I would recommend using negative three. Try using negative three. What that's going to do? It's going to make it a lot easier to hit balls up in the air, aerials. It, now it's going to be lower a lower angle um, when you're doing your ground game, and so it's going to take a little while to get used to. If you're not used to it, you're not going to be able to see above your car quite as well. But again, I would recommend negative three angle. Um, that is, again, a very common setting that the pros use. So negative three. Camera stiffness. What camera stiffness is, is how your car, how the camera basically sticks to the back of your car. So if you're going around a corner, if it's the camera stiffness is all the way up, it basically just follows it like this. And so if you ever played a racing game, you're going around a corner, um, the really sort of cheap racing games will just follow it right behind and it just it doesn't feel right. But the games for which are more arcade, well not cheap, but anyway, but the games that are more arcade-ish will allow the car to sort of like turn before the camera turns and you can kind of drift. It's much easier to drift around if you have a low camera stiffness because then it takes a while, a little while for the camera then to come back and follow. Um, so low camera stiffness, that's what it'll do. It'll really help you to be able to to sort of play around with the ball, be able to, to hit it sort of left and right, be able to be able to drift. It'll help you to kind of be able to drift a little bit better and things like that. The problem is that it's you're sometimes maybe not going to be able to be able to have such an accurate sort of view of where everything is because the camera lags behind. So some pros actually use camera stiffness quite high. Um, and some pros have it quite low and it's really again it's kind of similar to the camera angle um, in some of the other settings where it depends on your play style so if you uh, 
do a lot of ground game, I would say you probably want a lower camera stiffness. Um, but if you want something that's more consistent, then you want a higher camera stiffness. So the pros, um, the average for the pros in the RLCS was 0.5. The median was 0.45, which, you know, between, again, those two middle values, the average, 0.4, 0.5. The mode was 0.35, okay? So out of 50 players in the RLCS, the most common setting for camera stiffness was 0.35. And I think most used between, like, 0.35 to 0.45, kind of in that range. Um, but again, there's, there's plenty of outliers. Uh, but for me, I have gone to what the pros use, so I have it on 0.35. So camera swivel speed. What this is, is like how quickly the camera spins when you press the right analog stick. Um, so the pros average five, the median is five, but their most common is four, um, and the default is, is two and a half. And again, the higher the number, then the faster it will, it will kind of turn around. So let's put it up to four. These are the most common settings. Um, invert swivel pitch, I believe that's when you're up on the wall and you're kind of looking, anyway, just keep that checked for the most part, um, better to keep that checked. Hold ball camera, okay, so what this is, this is actually a sort of legacy option from um, the previous game, uh, Supersonic Acrobatic um, Rocket Power Battle Cars, um, SAR PBC, um, and basically, I think when SAR PBC came out, you had to hold the, a button down for ball cam. Um, and I think eventually they made it a toggle, but I think originally you had to hold it down. So a lot of the pros who are veterans of SARPBC, um, they are used to having that. So I believe Cox and I believe some other pros actually have this checked. And so what they do, I think Licinio might be um, one of those guys as well. Um, basically they have to hold down the ball cam button to have an on-ball cam. And so you'll notice some of the pros like Cooks here, what they'll do is they're, they have an on-ball cam as they go up to the ball and then all of a sudden, right before they hit the ball, they go into like car cam and then they hit the ball. Now there's two reasons for that. One is because they have an on-hold ball camera, hold ball cam, so it's easy for them to just let that button off and it'll just automatically switch. But the main reason why they do is is to get a more accurate hit on the ball right before they hit it. That's difficult to do if you have it as a toggle. You have to do it a little bit earlier. It's not as, I don't think it's as quick um, if you have a toggle compared to if you're using hold ball cam. But most people would not want to use hold ball cam because um, you don't want to hold that the whole way through. Most people have ball cam on probably at least 90% of the time. Um, you want to have ball cam on as much as you can when you're first learning the game, but you do want to have use the regular cam, what I call the car cam, um, for a lot of different things. One is when you go, you know, back to your own end or you're going to pick up boost, but it's also like critical when you're dribbling the ball or if the ball's like super high, um, those kind of instances. So um, make sure it's easy to get to your, um, your ball cam toggle button, but you want to leave that blank. Ball cam indicator, totally up to you whether you want the indicator on there. By default, the ball cam indicator is on there. Um, I turn it off. Uh, I don't know what the most pros do. Some have it on, some have it off. Um, I like to have it off because it it's just doesn't really need to be there. It is helpful sometimes because sometimes that ball arrow is not there or readily um, visible, but you want to have ball arrow checked, um, but sometimes it's not easy to tell whether you're in ball cam or not. It just depends. Um, sometimes I forget whether I'm in ball cam or not because I don't have the indicator on. So normally I would suggest leaving that on if you're, if you're just starting the game, um, but I turn it off. So again, uh, here you go. These are like the pro settings, um, basically. It's, uh, again, some pros will actually use whole ball cam, and some pros have different uh, different settings than this, but this is essentially what the pros use in the RLCS. Um, these are the most common settings. So I re recommend trying these out. The FOV, like I said, might be a little high for you, um, so you may want to go ahead and back that down. Uh, to be more comfortable. The camera distance, um, some of the pros actually use 270, 280, so you may want to try that as well. Some people like to have, be able to see a little bit more of the field. Um, so the average was 280, but the most common was actually 260. Uh, the median was kind of in between, probably more like 270. 270 is actually 275. So if you're really thinking, okay, what are the pros using? Probably this is a little bit closer. 
Um, but for me, I like it a little closer for now because I'm still trying to improve my skills and improve my consistency. So there you go. Uh, one of the things I want to show you is the vertical sync. Um, so you can see the, uh, you know, this is normal, this is PS4. If you turn vertical sync off here, you're going to get a lot more juddering as you move around. And that's actually screen tearing, but it's really because you can see how it just sort of judders. Um, not as the screen tearing is really not that bad. I mean, I remember playing games where it really, literally like the screen would, like tear that much, but the screen is tearing, but it's not really that terrible. Um, no pun intended. Uh, so I've gotten used to it, and you actually you won't notice a huge difference. Um, on PS4, what I've heard on PC, it's a big difference. Uh, so you want to turn V-Sync off on PC for sure. Um, if you have G-Sync or FreeSync on your computer, then you want to use that because then you can use that instead of uh, V-Sync. Um, but on PS4, what I, which I'm using, I would recommend testing it. Um, it hurt my eyes at first, it was distracting at first, but I slowly started getting used to it. I just started it yesterday. Um, so give that a try. And the main thing that will help is here, I'll show you real quick. If you go to vertical sync and you leave that on, okay, this is just kind of like dribbling, and that's fine, right? Okay, that's fine. And then what I'm going to do is turn the V-Sync off, and what I've found is it's easier to do these small little minute movements um, with the V-Sync off. It's just a little bit easier to control um, dribbles and probably little little movements. Um, you know, maybe your kickoffs will be a little bit better, maybe when you're doing your air rolls uh, and into your power shots. Um, big movements. Maybe not so much. Um, if you're still getting used to aerials and stuff, maybe that would be something you could, you could experiment with. Um, but try it without the V-Sync and see what it's like. Yeah, let me see if there's anything else. Um, so for the settings, a uh, couple of other settings I wanted to show. I don't. I'm not worried about the weather effects and light shafts. Uh, the weather effects used to be a problem with the frame rate on PS4. Um, but I don't see it as much. It's pretty much like every update, they seem to optimize it better for PS4. I don't really have any issues. Um, light shafts, though, I might turn off. That's actually new. I don't think they used to. I think the last update included that. You can turn that off because it can be pretty distracting in some of the um, some of the maps. But the weather effects, I don't think, really affect the frame rate much at all anymore. Um, but you can turn that off. Uh, controls. I just want to show you real quick. Um, controller vibration, I've actually turned off. Some people like to have that on because then it gives them that extra feedback and any kind of extra feedback is helpful. Um, but for me, it's it just was distracting and I felt like it actually made it a little bit harder to control my car at times because the vibration was so strong. The vibration is pretty strong um, in this game. Some games, you know, the, the controller vibration and the rumble is stronger than others. This game, I feel like it's pretty strong. So I turned it off, and, and there are people, lots of people that actually do recommend turning it off. Um, whether the pros do or not, I'm not sure. Uh, controller dead zone, I do know the pros, most pros do have a lower controller dead zone, but it really depends on your controller. Um, some controllers, from what I've heard, like Xbox controllers, um, tend to be a little looser. The sticks tend to be a little looser. The, the PS4 controllers are a little bit, a little bit tighter, the sticks, um, so you could lower the dead zone a little bit. But it really just depends on the controller. Um, for PS4 controllers, like the one I have, I dropped it down to 0 0.10, 0 0.1. Um, the biggest difference is I don't feel like I'm fighting the car as much. The car doesn't feel as heavy. So the default is 0.3. I would really recommend dropping it to at least 0.2, if not like 0.15 or 0.10. Um, what you may want to do is just drop it all the way down to 0.10, see how it feels for you. Most likely what you'll see is the car will feel a little bit more squirrely. You know, you're gonna feel, especially like when you're trying to do very fast, um, slight movements like kickoffs. Let's say you're trying to do a kickoff and you're doing like a fast kickoff when you're coming down and you just have to like, just adjust your car just right um, before you hit the ball. Probably a higher controller dead zone would be, would be better to keep you more centered. Same thing if you're like boosting up to a ball and you're just about to hit it. 
you want to hit it as accurately as possible, but you need to adjust your car a little bit to do that. With a higher controller dead zone, you're not gonna it's not gonna feel as squirrely. It's not gonna like push it too much by accident. So you're probably gonna be actually a little bit more accurate for those types of hits uh, if you have a little bit of like using the regular controller dead zone. Um, but if you're trying to quickly like maneuver your car, let's say you're up on the wall and you're trying to get off the wall or, or you're dribbling or any of those types of things, you want a lower controller dead zone. So that way you don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to like move your stick, you know, as far to be able to do these really quick minute adjustments. So it really depends. I mean, if you're, if you feel like you have the skill to be able to do those really minute adjustments, lower the dead zone as low as you can go. There's some pros, there's some people that use even below 0.10, they use like 0.05. Um, now the problem is, the main problem is, there's two issues with controller dead zone. One is that you can often get what they call drift. So basically the stick looks like it's not doing anything, but your car is like moving to the left or maybe it's moving to the right. Um, and that happens pretty much with all controllers over time. Uh, the sticks will eventually kind of like get a little too far to the left or right. And so you gotta increase that dead zone. Um, so that it won't, so you won't get that drift. The second issue is that, of course, it's much more sensitive. So if you're trying to do a, uh, a backflip, let's say you're doing like the fast aerial, right? But you want to do like the the fast aerial with the double jump, like that, right? Well, if you're still, if you're trying to go as vertical as possible, you're like pulling back. And let's say you go like this and you do the backflip, right? And of course, like that always happens. You're in goal. You're trying to make the save, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go get it. And, oh, the backflip and it goes right over top of you. This happens so much more if you have a lower controller dead zone. With a higher controller dead zone, it doesn't happen as much because you're like, as soon as you let go of that stick, um, it doesn't have to get all the way to center to be able to register as it's not being touched. Um, so it's much easier to do like these really big vertical double jump. See, look, I did the back flip. So you have to be really careful with those vertical, like if you want to get vertical fast, you have to be really careful to get that left stick, let go of that left stick for that second jump if you have the control of the dead zone down uh, pretty low like that. Um, so those are the things to keep in mind is drift and those sort of accidental backflips. Those will happen sometimes uh, with a lower dead zone. But I would recommend trying it out. It really helped me. I felt like the car was, I was fighting the controls and the car felt heavy. But once I lowered the dead zone, then it's, it helped tremendously. Um, let me see. I'm going to jump into Twitch because I have, the way I have it set up, I can't see any comments. I'm not sure if anybody's done any comments. Probably not. But I'm going to bring up the dashboard and see. Sorry about that. All right, cool. Um, I can't even tell what's going on. So getting used to this, this is, this is only like my fourth or fifth stream. So bear with me. Still trying to figure this out. Activity. Share channel. Should probably be on the dashboard though, right? Okay. All right. So um, that's the dead zone. So again, play with that. The default is 0.3, but I would try to get it down to at least 0.2, but see if you can get it down lower. Camera settings, again, for the most part, these are the pro uh, settings. And then the only other thing that I would say is just as a reminder for, um, where is it, for the text chat, uh, if you're having problems, if you tilt very easily, change it to like team only or quick chat only. So that's what I'd recommend. Um, pros, they don't care. They have it on there, but I, I would do that. One thing I did want to show though is high contrast nameplates. I'm not sure if people are aware of this, but that was a feature like in the last couple of updates um, and it's kind of hidden, but basically what it does was is it puts like a, a white border around the nameplate above the cars. Um, plus it makes the, um, the border Instead of like, you know, the pill, it kind of has like this little point toward the end. Um, plus, I think the names are in white. That's for your opponents. For your teammates or the usual type. Um, but for uh, opponents, it's it's much easier to sort of see who they are. So I thought it was going to be distracting, but it's totally worth it. I would definitely use high contrast nameplates, and I think most pros 
do appear to use that. So I would do that. And again, for me, I do quick chat only. So that's just so you know, when I stream, I can't see the text of other players because uh, I don't really feel like seeing it. <laughs> so again, um, try these settings out. Hopefully they help you. These are the average. These are the most common settings of pro players, the 50 pro players uh, in the RLCS um, during the league play. Um, and they probably did have ball cam indicator. I'm not sure if they did or not. Um, but some of them did have a little bit higher camera distance, 270, 280. So it's up to you what you want to do for that. So I hope that's helped. Um, again, try turning off vertical sync. Try lowering your controller dead zone. Try it with vibration off. Hopefully that helps you to hit more accurately. And I hope this has helped. I'm going to now switch over to just playing some ranked games. And I'm going to change the stream name. All right. Let's see. Let me make sure I have everything set back. Camera shape, 10, 10, negative 3. And again, that camera angle, really important for hitting aerials. So if you have it at default, then I kept on going. If you have a problem with going high over the ball, so you're trying to go for the aerial and you keep going over, then try lowering it to like negative 3 uh, or negative 4. But you can try lowering it and... Um, Again, that's, that's a common setting from pros, and it just helps you to be closer in line um, with, with what you're trying to hit. But it does make it a little bit harder to see like over your car and over the ball if the ball's on top of your car, so you have to keep that in mind. Let me see, so threes, make sure everything is back to what I had it before.